Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we take a look at another one of Andre Sloan's most recent videos as he takes apart Rago Monkey. And if you don't know who this guy is, he is uh, Joey Surreal Camera's right hand man and complete simp. Yeah, pretty much that's the way you can describe him as. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's discuss Rago Monkey, um, as he likes to call his channel. And as you can see here, that comes up on the first page here, um, criminal charges. I want you to note that the first seven were uh, uh, dropped by the prosecutor. That's what NOLA uh, prosecui means. Um, back in 2009, April 28th of 2009, when Rago Monkey was uh, just 20 years old as an adult, he got a uh, bought a possessed cannabis charge down in Miami, Florida, and that one was uh, Nola Prosequi. Now we go skip ahead a year, four two of 2010, we got a possessed cannabis charge again, and that one was also Nola Prosequi. And then in uh, June of 27th of 2010, he bought another possessed cannabis charge. That one was out of Palm Beach County down in Florida. And that one was Nola Prosequi. And then we jump ahead to 722 2010. We've got a possessed cannabis from my Florida. And again, Nola Prosequi. Beginning to think Rago Monkey might be a pothead. Not only that, he could be an outright snitch because, well, I've known people like this throughout my life and, uh, well, they usually end up snitching out the bigger guys because the police want to break up these uh, drug rings and if they can get a hold of the bigger guys, they'll let the smaller fish go. I mean, that's what's wrong with him today. So he's had about four months and he bought a criminal uh, concealed carry weapon, uh, which was a misdemeanor. And that was out of Miami, Florida, and that one was Nola Prosequi. Makes you begin to wonder what's going on here. We jump ahead uh, six months or so, and in March 21, 2011, he got a resist officer without violence charge in Miami, and he also got a disorderly conduct charge in Miami. Both of those were also dropped uh, by the prosecutor. So we're going to jump to page two of his criminal history, as you can see here. And on June 27th, 2011, he picked up another can possessed cannabis charge. Only this time he was found guilty and he received a fine. And now we got into uh, some traffic charges here. On uh, March 30th, 2012, he got two tickets for no insurance out of Broward County, Florida. Um, the case was disposed of, but he pled, uh, he pled to a charge of uh, not carrying or exhibiting his license. Um, I imagine he received a fine for that. On 8-22-2013, almost 18 months later, well, 15 months later, uh, he was found drunk in public, and that one was nola prosequi by the uh, prosecutors. And then on 9-26-2013, he got another possessed cannabis charge out of Miami, Florida, and that one was Nola Prosequi. On October 6, 2014, he got a DWI, driving while intoxicated, in Miami, Florida. He was found guilty and received fines. Now on 2-28-2019, he got two charges. One of them was carrying a concealed weapon, which was a felony, and then he got a possessed cannabis charge. He was found guilty on both charges, and he was fined $598 and received one year of probation. It's kind of strange for a felony that he only got a year, but hey, now he's convicted of his first felony. Um, on March 26, 2019, he bought two more charges. One was resist an officer without viol uh, violence, and the other one was a tamper with the victim, which was a felony, 
and I can't tell if he was found guilty or there was no action on it. Um, two different databases. One showed he was guilty. He received a fine. The other one stated that there was no action on the charge. And um, both of them stated there was no action on the resist officer charge. Now we skip ahead to February 28th, 2020, and we had no or improper signals in his vehicle for a vehicle and traffic infraction, and it was dismissed after he paid a $50 fine. Now on uh, July 24th, 2020, he got three charges uh, out of his vehicle, and we've got uh, the bottom one here is going to be no vehicle registration, driver's license not carried or exhibited, and the last one was unlawful temporary tag. All three charges were dismissed. And then people wonder why criminals do what they do, because there's no consequences to his actions. Well, I would say that would be one part of the formula right there as to why Braggo Monkey, uh, well, keeps on doing this. He definitely uh, has never really suffered any consequences for his actions. So therefore, he probably feels entitled by this point that he believes that he is a king or something like that. Now on 7-25-2020, he received two charges. One of them was stalking, which was a misdemeanor, and the second one was resisting an officer without violence, which was also a misdemeanor. Both of them were nola prosequi, but he paid fines on the stalking charge, probably to drop it like an ACD, adjournment in contemplation of dismissal. Behave yourself for six months and we'll drop it uh, as long as you pay the fine. Now on 3-23-21, he got two charges for violating a lane control sign. He was found, one of them was dismissed. He was found guilty on the other and given a $179 fine. Finally, getting something for his actions here. And finally, we're on to the third and last page of uh, Rago Monkey's uh, charges. And we got on 5-20-21, he was arrested for resisting officer without violence, Nola Prosequi. Now, I want you to see that all of those charges that he got for resisting uh, officers, all of them except for one coming up, was actually dropped. Now, on 7-7-21, he bought two more charges. They were vehicle and traffic infractions, one for uh, not proof of insurance uh, re required he, uh, and no insurance. Uh, and, oh, actually, there's a third charge, I apologize, for an unlawful transfer of tags. That means he took the tag off another vehicle and put it on his so it would have a license plate on it while he was driving. That charge was dismissed. The ins no insurance charge was dismissed when he showed proof he had insurance. He probably went and got it the next day or something. And uh, proof insurance required the last one he was found guilty of and given a $129 fine. Now on 12-16-21, Rago Monkey was arrested for disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor out of Miami, Florida, and that charge was dismissed. Now, on February 7th, 2022, he got another charge for no vehicle registration. That was out of Miami, Florida, and he was found guilty and given a fine. Finally, finally gets some uh, consequences to his actions for uh, resisting officers. On October 7th, 2022, he resisted an officer without violence down there in Miami-Dade, Florida. Yeah, I remember this one right here. I do believe that this is the one where... There was an unsecured firearm on the scene that belonged to the person in the vehicle that the officer had stopped for a traffic violation. And he was just trying to make sure that it was secured, but Arago Monkey refused to back off and, well, ended up getting arrested because of his own stupidity. Because, you know, the officer didn't want Rago Monkey getting too close to that dang firearm. He was found guilty, given a fine, and given six months probation. Now, not uh, only four months later, he was given uh, an unknown charge. It, that's the first time I've seen that come up. It said unknown um, on January 4th, 2023. But he was found guilty and given a $77.50 fine. I have no clue what that charge was for. Um, and then going to his uh, last arrest that I found on a database, 
was on April 26, 2023, where he was arrested for resisting an officer without violence uh, from Miami, Florida. And so far, there's no disposition on that charge. So I'm not sure if uh, maybe they're just a little behind in getting him in the system or if he hasn't gone to court yet on it or not. I really don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, what would do you think of 22 criminal charges and 12 vehicle and traffic tickets what do you does that sound to you like a true freedom fighter oh hell no (laughs) or does that sound to you like somebody that maybe has a grudge against the police so that's why he does what he does doesn't have anything to do with the first amendment or have anything to do with educating people out there about their First Amendment rights or recording in public or anything like that? Nope, nope. I would think a common career criminal like this, it would come back that, you know, he didn't get any, uh, you know, most of these charges were dropped. So he never had any consequences for his actions, for the things that he did. So why stop? So he, uh, excuse me, he continues on. Yeah, no, no, I don't think it has anything to do with the First Amendment, ladies and gentlemen. It has everything to do with he's trying to get revenge on the system because the system has made him obey the laws. Yeah, I would say that's true about most frauditors. Most of them have a problem with authority. They snub their nose at the law or any authority whatsoever. And, well, they uh, quite often end up in jail or prison Anyway, so why not just go ahead and do what you do best, snub your nose at authority, and uh, display it for the world to see on YouTube, and get paid for being a complete asshole. But YouTube won't be around forever, and uh, therefore a lot of these guys won't exactly be so well rewarded for this crap, and it'll just fade away into obscurity for a while anyway. So that was Andre Sloan right there. If you like this channel, you can go ahead and follow the link in the description box below and head on over to his channel. Give him a big thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to his channel. In the meantime, I will see you guys on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?